But I really would like to thank you very much for organizing uh, this event, for giving me uh, your kind uh, invitation and to organize it uh, in, this, uh, in, the, in the historic uh, uh, building and uh, reminding me, of course, how our history is very much intertwined in Europe, that how we've been living together, then we wanted to show that we can make it uh, on, our no, on our own just to prove uh, that uh, we are already uh, mature nations, uh, mature countries which can cooperate on equal basis with our neighbors, with our partners across, across the Europe. And this is something which uh, we really need to do today because Europe and the world goes through very uh, turbulent uh, events and uh, therefore uh, we need the common projects with the vision. We need to look forward uh, how we, the Europe, can contribute to the positive uh, global development, show our innovative spirit, uh, which I have seen already. It's uh, very much present here in Ireland. And the events like today are very important for me because uh, what I do here, I think Helen was very exactly and very precisely describing my motives. From one side, I'm campaigning for the Energy Union because I want to make sure that uh, this is the project which is common, which is European. This is the project uh, upon uh, which we can uh, manage that, that uh, mobilization among our member states, among our stakeholders, industry, but especially the citizens. I'm absolutely um, convinced that the energy union cannot be built in Brussels. It must be built in the member states. It must be built here in Dublin, in Cork, on your farms, in your innovative labs, in your research institutes dealing with the uh, ocean uh, energy. Uh, it must be supported by the stakeholders, by the companies, by the, by the consumers. And therefore, I'm very glad that I could be here today. And yesterday, we had uh, lots of meetings where I was talking, but I was listening a lot because each country has something to contribute. And definitely, Ireland has a lot of experience and a lot of uh, innovative ideas how to advance our uh, energy union project uh, together. When the new commission was... Uh, being formed, it was quite clear that uh, the signal we received from the citizens in the European Parliament election was that they want us to do the job differently. And the president uh, decided that we have to focus really on the big thing. We have to have clear priorities. We have to overcome that uh, perception, which was very much there, that we are trying to deal with almost every single detail of our European uh, citizens' lives, that we have to focus on the areas uh, where we can really make a difference, when we can deliver the change, and we have to do it in a way that our citizens and our member states can understand it and can support. And one of these top projects which was really put on the table, I would say, by the events, by the necessity, by the expectations uh, of our citizens was the project uh, of uh, the energy union. The question is why? I think we kind of felt it already for some time that this energy and climate issues, uh, the integration or the interaction between uh, CO2 emissions in the field like transport, uh, agriculture, efficiency over buildings, uh, the, the research and innovation potential we have in Europe, and these different devel developments across our member states in different subsidies uh, for different types of energy in one country, capacity mechanism, uh, uh, financing in another country, kind of created the situation where we had to honestly state that uh, the energy systems and energy cooperation as we have it in Europe is not longer sustainable. I think we had to be that honest, we had to be that straightforward just to put on the table the, the, the strategy for energy union which would reflect the situation and propose how to go from that situation forward. There have been of course several reasons for that. I think that one which kind of uh, help us to gather the momentum for the change was also the geopolitical crisis and the situation in the eastern Ukraine, where again, especially in Central and Eastern Europe, we've been reminded uh, that our uh, security of supply is under threat, that uh, even though we uh, as Europe are the biggest uh, customers in the world, paying 400 billion euros for energy imports, cannot be sure that even for that money, we can get the energy on time, we can get the energy where and when we need it, and we would pay the fair price for it. 
So that way it was quite clear that we need to have uh, a common European position speaking with one voice how to make sure that energy security is much stronger in Europe than before. And of course, it was quite clear that today, if you look at uh, the energy, we already overcome the traditional approach of the past decade where the energy was seen as something like very linear process where you produce the energy, you distribute it, you consume it. It's quite clear that it's not that simple anymore because we need to factor in many other developments uh, like the climate change, like our climate goals, uh, our, our need uh, to decarbonize uh, our economies, and we have to have really much more complex and holistic approach uh, to these issues. The crisis which we went through in Europe, and, uh, uh, and I know that it was a particularly difficult uh, moment uh, for Ireland, brought us another reminder that even though the Europe is one of the most prosperous uh, places on this planet, we have energy poverty in our countries. We have more than 10% Europeans who have problems to pay the energy bills. We have more than 10% uh, Europeans who cannot heat up uh, their houses properly. And, uh, uh, and uh, we have more than 10% of Europeans uh, who are really struggling to make sure that uh, the houses and uh, the households have enough uh, electricity um, to run their family lives or to run their small businesses. And uh, we kind of realize also the fact that we can tackle many of these issues if we tap into the innovative potential in Europe, if we use the technologies which are already available and try to look at energy efficiency with a different eyes. To see it as a new real source of energy supply, to see it as an uh, instrument uh, to tackle some of the issues of energy poverty or to make sure that uh, our houses are warm. Yesterday I heard such a comparison that how come in the Nordic countries they are living in, this, in, this, in these wooden houses and they are warm and we in Ireland have these very solid stone houses and they are cold. And I know that you all know the answers because uh, uh, simply the new technologies, insulation, support for energy efficiency of uh, our houses uh, came probably a little bit earlier to our Nordic countries than to Central Eastern Europe or to, uh, or to Ireland. And we know what kind of potential we have there because 40% of our energy is consumed exactly on heating and cooling on our, of our houses. And I'm sure that we can do better and uh, we can have much higher efficiency uh, in Europe. One of the preconditions for that is that we need uh, to restore what I would call normal in, in investment pattern in Europe. Because of the crisis, we are, we are in a situation where our infrastructure is still under heavy underinvestment. We've been losing every year during the crisis between two to 300 billion of euros of lack of investment. And you can feel it everywhere. You can feel it uh, also in the countries like Germany, where you see that the bridges be not repaired, you see it in Central Europe, where you, you see that not enough interconnectors uh, has been built, and, and you could feel that in the area of energy and transport and ICT infrastructure, we need to invest, and we need to invest a lot. So how to do that? Of course, we have uh, formidable institutions like uh, European Investment Bank, like EBRD, but it's simply not enough, because you need to tap into the potential of private investors. You need to create the conditions where you're not afraid uh, to invest. You need to give them the framework, the guidance, and the helping hand uh, that, uh, especially in these transition times when we are returning back to growth and here the island is doing enormous progress, it's again safe uh, to invest. It's good to invest. You need to have a good project and you need to have the certain safety net which we are trying to offer through the Juncker Investment Fund, which could be also seen as a first eventual lost insurance. Then you have a borderline case, where you have a project where you would invest, but you're still not 100% sure. There, you should go to the, to the Juncker Investment Fund to make sure that you get that helping hand, that you get that co-financing, and that you can go together with the EIB, with the, with, the, with the commission support for these infrastructural projects which would make the difference and where you as an investor would feel safe that investment is good, secure, and uh, will bring uh, the necessary uh, return. 
Coming back to the energy union, I know that you are familiar with the, with the concept uh, where we try to cover the issues really important for this uh, economic and energy transition in Europe from these five key dimensions to make sure that we have uh, security of supply, that we are less dependent on external suppliers, to uh, complete our internal energy market, to work on our hardware and software to make sure that our technical barriers uh, um, represented by the lack of interconnectors, by the, by the, by the lack of connections uh, among our member states, uh, uh, plus uh, the lack of cooperation among our regulators who are still until today are using different methodologies, different network codes, uh, different approaches to how to regulate the market uh, should be overcome and we should really create for our companies the possibility to make sure that energy flows freely across the borders or in the case of Ireland across the seas and that our consumers, be it industry or households, would have a better possibility to choose to, uh, to let the market uh, um, play uh, its game, play its role and to make sure that we have more competitive uh, prices uh, in Europe. We also wanted to make sure that uh, we gave the energy efficiency much higher meaning in all what we do because we know very well that uh, just by 1% of uh, energy efficiency gain, we can, Im uh, we can import by 2% less of the gas and that's, uh, I think, very significant uh, if you see the potential we have in Europe uh, in uh, uh, energy efficiency and you could see how significantly we can increase the, the number. And, of course, uh, the last... Uh, dimension very closely linked with our uh, um, decarbonization goals with the support uh, uh, with renewables is very much linked with research and innovation and uh, the new approaches to how to manage uh, the power generation, how to manage the distribution and how to offer our consumers uh, up-to-date new, new technologies for the smart uh, energy uh, uh, consumption. We are working on uh, delivering on all these dimensions on such a three major tracks. Of course, the first one is political because it's quite clear that without, without uh, ownership for this process from the member state, without uh, support from the national parliaments, without uh, having um, a, a strong uh, uh, support uh, and encouragement for this process from our citizens, uh, this uh, very important economic and energy transition would not be possible. Therefore, we are trying to engage as, uh, as much as possible with the stakeholders like you, just to present you our vision, our plans, but also to listen to you to make sure that we find the specific, uh, fair, just, and good answer to the questions coming from different uh, corners of Europe to make sure that we are building the energy union in which every country feels uh, comfortable and uh, uh, feels as an active, engaging partner. Here we also discussed uh, what is the special uh, features which would be required from uh, Ireland. We had a very good meeting with uh, uh, Tisha and Dakeni, with Tony Shta, John Burton, with uh, Alex, uh, but also with the Minister of Agriculture, which is a very important sector for Ireland, Simon Coveney. And uh, it was quite, quite clear that uh, Ireland uh, supports the energy union and Ireland uh, wants to be active partner of this exercise, but at the same time, Ireland also wants that its specificities would be respected, which is absolutely a natural and fair, fair request. Uh, we would like to make sure that this political track would not end up with my energy union tour. We want to have uh, the uh, energy union on the table of the politicians and in the public eye permanently. I will present the first State of the Energy Union report in the November of this year because I would like to have this yearly exercise where in the autumn we will always have a chance to look back what we did right, where we are uh, not delivering as expected, where we need to accelerate our efforts. And I would like to give the ministers of energy, transport, competitiveness, environment, the possibility to discuss the progress and also to feed in what I hope would be annual regular discussion on the energy, climate and transport issue at the December uh, summits where our heads of states and government will convene and when I think they have uh, to just simply look at uh, the progress what we achieved in Europe and also help us to keep up the momentum and if necessary to do the, uh, the political arbitration how to 
uh, move uh, with the project of the energy union, uh, energy union forward. Um, one of the outcomes of uh, the energy union, I hope, uh, uh, will be that in 2017 we start to work closely with our member states on the national energy and climate plans because I think that uh, each member state had to have a look and use their own national optics how to contribute to the energy union, how to be part uh, of this exercise and uh, how to uh, fit uh, the, the country into this big frame which we are build uh, in Europe, how to make sure that all those ambitious goals uh, also in the field of uh, uh, fighting the climate change would be respected by our, by our member states. And that uh, is something which is already happening in Ireland because uh, with uh, Alex we had the chance to discuss uh, the white paper, green paper and the, and the, and the planning the Ireland is doing in, in this respect and it's exactly, I would say, this long term. Uh, uh, approach which uh, would be necessary from the point of view of member states but also on the, uh, from the point of view of the European Union. On the legislative track, we are advancing according to the schedule. Uh, we just adopted the summer package where I believe you noticed especially the reform of the ETS uh, proposal where we need to adjust uh, our emission trading system to the new goals which are set for 2030. We started a public consultation on how to redesign electricity uh, market, which I think would be landmark uh, proposal which we want to put on the table next summer. And we also wanted to make sure that uh, our citizens, the consumers, will see that energy union is especially about them. Therefore, we adopted uh, the communication which is called New Deal for the Consumers, where we are trying to set out the best practices and approaches which would put the consumers uh, uh, in this very important seat when they can decide from whom, under what condition they want, uh, they want to buy the energy, where we want to encourage uh, the smart uh, meter technologies, smart decisions for the household uh, uh, consumption, as well as uh, the proposals we made, how to innovate the, the energy labeling, because that's a, a uh, good approach for the industry, for the consumers to produce the most uh, energy efficient uh, household appliances. We will be working at this pace until the, until the uh, autumn uh, of, the, of the next, uh, next year, where we would like to bring uh, gas package uh, in the spring, the big uh, uh, non-ETS related uh, package of legislations uh, in the summer, and to, to conclude with uh, renewables and energy efficiency package in the autumn. Why so fast? Why, uh, why there is such a rush? Because uh, we would like to make sure that uh, we will put all the pieces of the puzzle on the table until the end of the next year. Because we want the member states to see what's on the menu, what is the frame within which we have to work on these national energy and climate plans. And we also want to have ample of time until the end of the term of uh, this commission to make sure that these proposals will become legislation. So when we will be leaving, we can say that we are living with a very solid uh, fundament uh, uh, of the energy union already built, endorsed, and uh, uh, really make the, the, the transition uh, irreversible process which would lead us uh, to the new patterns, new behavior, and, and new positive results for the, for the next decade. Where Ireland is featuring in this, this exercise? I think that Ireland would benefit from the energy union a lot. At first, uh, we are very much supporting the better interconnections between Ireland uh, and uh, the neighbors and partners in uh, the European Union. We are working through uh, so-called uh, PCI, projects of common interest, uh, um, uh, list of projects where Ireland has uh, 18, uh, 18 projects, uh, projects already uh, listed and uh, highlighted. And of course, uh, they are projects which are very much uh, in the field of uh, interconnectors. We see that North-South interconnector is something of uh, strategic importance. We know that uh, there is a lot of uh, debate uh, as about any important project in Europe, but at the same time we are absolutely convinced about its strategic importance uh, for a better uh, inter uh, interconnection between uh, Ireland uh, and Northern Ireland, and we see it as one of the projects which could really help to increase uh, the rate of uh, interconnection uh, between Ireland uh, and, and the neighbors up to 
10%, uh, uh, which is such an uh, expectation that each member state uh, would have by 2020. But there are other uh, projects which are uh, very important as well as a, a project linking, uh, linking Ireland uh, uh, with the UK, linking Ireland uh, uh, with France, or uh, having Ireland as a very important uh, partner of the uh, offshore grid uh, cooperation in the North Sea, which is seen by uh, um, many uh, forecasters as, uh, uh, as a cooperation of enormous potential and magnitude. And I know that uh, Dutch presidency, which will start on the 1st of January, will see this project as one of the priorities and would like to create uh, the, uh, the new frames for this very important, uh, very important um, uh, uh, cooperation. So we believe that uh, by better connecting Ireland to the rest of Europe, you will get from the position, as I always uh, uh, heard it described by, uh, by my Irish friends, the island behind the island, by the country which through these interconnectors come into the uh, heart of the European energy cooperation. For that, except the hardware, we of course need the very solid software, better cooperation among the regulators, new electricity market design I was, uh, I was referring to, and of course uh, the respect uh, for all those uh, ambitious targets that we set for ourselves uh, for, uh, for 2030. If you allow me just to dwell very shortly on the third track, which is very uh, important for uh, Europe in the energy field as well. There we are working very hard on uh, several uh, crucial issues. First, we really want to have success at the conference COP21 in Paris. Because I believe that uh, this generation owes it to the next generation to hand over the planet in at least such a state as we inherited. So it means we need uh, to get uh, the, the, the climate change uh, under control. Europe is play, playing the very important role in this respect, and now we have to convince other global partners to do the same, or to do something which is comparable to what Europe is already doing. We owe it to the next generation, but I also know that our industry very much uh, wants to be in the position when they can say that we have level playing field, that we are ready to be in the leading position, but we are we also want to see that industry in other global markets it's, it's doing comparable effort and they're also trying to be as efficient, as environmentally uh, conscious as we are. On the other front, we are working very hard to make sure that the security of supply for the Europe uh, is much stronger than before. I'm mediating between uh, uh, Russian and Ukrainians uh, on uh, gas supply for the next winter. As you can imagine, because of the uh, conflict in eastern Ukraine, these uh, negotiations are also very tough, uh, very, very emotional. But I think that we found the, the, the good, good solution, good framework, how to overcome these problems for the next winter and hopefully create much more um, confidence and confidence building uh, in uh, relationship between these two countries in the field of energy, which we hope will also contribute to the overall improvement of the uh, relations uh, uh, between these two very important uh, neighbors. At the same time, uh, we are working on the new LNG strategy uh, for, for Europe because we believe that with the current uh, prices development on the LNG, uh, LNG could become new source uh, of uh, energy supplies. Uh, we believe that if we interconnect our terminals uh, better, uh, if uh, we uh, ma make sure that uh, our policies in that field would encourage that development, all that uh, new capacity which is being built in the States, in Australia, this big potential we see in the Middle East or newly uh, developed uh, uh, fields uh, uh, from Mediterranean could be a very important supplier of gas. Not speaking about almost... Uh, uh, a completed uh, a project uh, bringing the Caspian gas uh, through Azerbaijan, Turkey, Greece to Italy and European gas networks, which would give us adequate uh, um, uh, choice and possibility to, to get uh, the gas from different sources and making sure that our over-dependence on one dominant supplier uh, is, 
under control and is not uh, that uh, high as it was uh, as it was in the past. Um, if you allow me uh, to conclude by uh, appreciating the the way how the island managed. Uh, uh, her way through the crisis. You know that you went through very difficult times. I can tell you that looking at your uh, figures of the growth of the last year and this year, it's encouraging, it's, it's admirable. I think you again proven that you are a country of enormous uh, innovative uh, potential of hardworking people who can reinvent herself in the difficult times of crisis. For that, uh, you really deserve lots of compliments. I can tell you that we are using your examples when you are talking about uh, uh, the reforms, about the hard work, and about uh, the ability to change uh, a lot. And uh, I really would like to thank you for that. I would like to thank you for always being the uh, great partners and great uh, members of the European Union. And I'm very much looking forward to our discussion. Thank you very much.